Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLine. As you guys know, recently, because of time constraint with my new job, I've been very selective in the coins that I do a review on, and I've really only been doing reviews on coins that I myself am personally quite excited about and keeping a close eye on. Today, I would like to introduce to you the token Hydro from the project Hydrogen. The thing that caught my eye about this project hydrogen was this article from TD Bank a couple of weeks ago. The article itself wasn't about hydrogen, it was about TD Bank buying over another financial institution. However, in that article, there was one sentence that said, the bank is partnering with US firm hydrogen on this product. And that one sentence got my attention. You see, TD Bank is the world's 13th largest bank with an asset value of over $1.2 trillion. Not million, not billion, but trillion dollars. That's four times larger than the entire crypto market worth currently. Now, if this piece of news is true, then Hydrogen would have gotten itself a partnership that is worth more than the combined partnerships of EOS, Cardano, Litecoin, and Tron combined together. This one partnership will make this project as big as Stellar and IBM's partnership. And we all know what happened when Stellar Token announced their partnership with IBM last year. The news of that one partnership literally catapulted Stellar into the top 10 cryptocurrencies. Now, I honestly believe that this news was actually a leak. It was not meant to be announced because the news didn't come from Hydrogen or TD Bank themselves. It was only from the person who was writing this article. He wrote one line that he shouldn't have and he leaked the news that he shouldn't have. Now, sometimes after an important news is leaked, for example, if a partnership like this is announced beforehand or if a coin is um, leaked that they're going to be listed on the exchange before it happens, sometimes leaking the news can result in a devastating result where the whole deal could be called off. Fortunately, it didn't happen in this case. And recently on their Telegram chat, the team put out a news or a pin message that said, other upcoming events, including TD Bank, the 13th most valuable bank in the world, PR announcement by the end of July, Findi launch, we already have a 20 plus billion company signed up, big PR possible. So I think that TD Bank news and partnership with Hydro is a legit news that came out beforehand and both TD Bank as well as the Hydrogen project are getting ready to release the news officially. In other words, I think that this project is on the brink of announcing a large partnership that could shake the entire crypto space. And that's why I wanted to do a review of Hydrogen today. If you would like to learn more about this project, Hydrogen, keep watching this video. Twenty-five percent of all blockchain projects currently revolve around the financial industry. Hydrogen describes itself as the fintech blockchain. It's a rather generic description that makes it hard to know how does this project stand out from the other 500 financial blockchain projects. But actually, Hydrogen is a very unique project in the way that it approaches the fintech scene. Most financial-based blockchain projects, for example, Ripple or Stellar, aim to improve the financial transaction itself. They aim to introduce a cheaper and faster way to do cross-border payments, etc. But the difficulty they face targeting the financial transaction, first of all, is scalability because the blockchain is primarily made for security, not for speed. And secondly, they will face the difficulty of mass adoption because by changing the financial transaction itself, it means that if a bank or a financial institution wanted to use their technology, that bank or financial company would have to make very huge adjustments to their current practice in order to utilize the blockchain technology. Hydrogen, though, is a second layer solution to financial transactions that adds an additional layer of super security and open ledger to all transactions. And they do this after the bank has done its thing. In other words, hydrogen doesn't interfere at all with the way the banks or the financial institutions do their uh, financial transactions. After the bank has done their financial transactions, hydrogen will come in to add a second layer of security. 
it's non-intrusive into the way that the bank is working at the moment, is easy to adopt. And I think that's why bank and other major financial institutions will find it so easy to use. In essence, they are providing the benefits of the blockchain decentralized open ledger with zero disruption to the existing current practices. To understand hydrogen, you need to understand two aspects of this project, the technology as well as the APIs. The technology of hydrogen has five core features that are called raindrop, snowflake, ice, tide, and mist. These are the five technologies that as a project they are bringing to provide the advantages of blockchain for financial institutions. The first technology is raindrop. Raindrop is a protocol that enables single or multi-factor authentication process. So it's an authentication protocol. The authentication process will help to prevent system breaches and data compromise. The raindrop feature is already up and running. It's a rather complicated feature that comprises of both a server-side validation as well as a client-side validation. Think of it as validating an account before doing a transaction. So for example, if I wanted to send a large sum of money to your crypto wallet, what I might do first is to send a micro transaction, a very small sum to your wallet initially to confirm that the transaction has gone through before sending a larger sum. In a very similar but more complicated way, Raindrop does the same thing, but as the name Raindrop suggests, the protocol validates very specific individual transactions and which transaction it validates is unpredictable very much like the raindrops in the storm and rather than sending the user the amount directly and having the user send it back hydrogen uses um, a middleman by defining a transaction and then the user must execute it from the middleman known wallet and this can only be done by the user having a direct access to the wallet in question it's all a little bit complicated, but in, it's, in essence, this is a authentication process. Currently, the safest way that most people know how to do financial transactions, even for us in the crypto space when we use crypto exchanges, is to use a two-factor authentication. But as you can see, Raindrop as an, authentic, as an authentication feature has so many additional features that Google authentication can't even compare with it. I believe that the security of accounts is a very um, fast growing space that a lot of people are paying attention to and a lot of people are willing to spend in order to protect their account and their assets. And we've seen this two-factor authentication take off over the last decade and major players like Google are using it now. And I think that we will see blockchain authentication solutions like Raindrop take over, take off over the next decade. The next core feature of the project is known as Snowflake. This is basically an identity management system. So just as other blockchain projects like Ontology, The Key or SelfKey, they use the immutable, untemperable nature of the blockchain to create identities for individuals and institutions. Snowflake does the same by using the blockchain to create unique identities for every participant. Now, unlike ID cards or passports which can be faked, or unlike digital IDs which can be hacked and tampered with, Blockchain identities are recorded on an open ledger. They are decentralized, meaning they can never be hacked or tampered with. A blockchain identity is even more secure than a passport. So just as every snowflake in the real life is unique and different in pattern from others, the snowflake technology will create and use unique digital fingerprints for each individual user. Both Raindrop and Snowflakes are working products and each of them have their own white paper which is accessible from the Hydrogen website. The other three technologies, Ice, Tide and Mist, have not been released yet. But Ice will be a service to stamp and record contracts on the blockchain in order to secure contracts on the blockchain. And Tide will extend payment solutions to the Unbank and Mist aims to integrate AI into this blockchain project to utilize machine learning and network optimization. We have to wait to hear more on these um, features. And that's the technology of hydrogen in a nutshell. It's a rather impressive technology with a wide array of features that is very practical and useful to the financial industry. The way that hydrogen makes this technology usable by the banks and financial institutions is by creating what is known as the hydrogen atom. The Atom is basically a platform on which API modules are built. 
Now, APIs are not applications. APIs are applications for applications. So on your mobile phone, you will have various applications, and one of those applications might be Uber Eats. Uber Eats is an application that has different features on it. For example, it has a payment service, it has a restaurant menu where you can choose the food from, and it has a GPS to track the delivery of your food. Now, each of these features are known as an API. So an API is an application for applications. So Hydrogen doesn't create their own software and demand that the banks will discard their existing software to learn a new program. Instead, they create APIs to integrate into existing software that the banks are already using. So again, they are aiming for very minimal disruption and a very low barrier to adoption. Some of the APIs that they are creating include a Nucleus API. Nucleus API are APIs that will help to provide the core digital infrastructure to the fintech application. So some of the services of a Nucleus API might include authentication, storing, encrypting client information, management of client accounts, and more. Other APIs they are also producing include Proton APIs, which are help to provide financial engineering services such as risk scoring, ghost tracking, simulations, and more. Electron APIs help to provide the functionality to grow the a fintech a company. So example, it provides um, support, marketing, billings, etc. So it's basically a very holistic platform that covers all the essential needs of a fintech company. Now, the entire Hydrogen project is also designed to have a lot of token use, which is great news for the token investor in terms of token demand and token price. Raindrop will use Hydro tokens to pay for authentication attempts. Snowflake will require Hydro tokens for the use of identity data. ICE will use Hydro tokens to pay for the stamping of contracts. Tide and Mist, we will have to wait to see how they will use Hydrogen tokens, but it is planned that they will integrate token use as well. The entire hydrogen technology is run with smart contracts. Now, the easiest way for companies to access these smart contracts is to use APIs. But should the company wish to not use the API, they can still use the smart contracts by staking hydrogen tokens. And so what they do by staking hydro tokens is really locking the tokens into an escrow. And that hydro token is what is used to fuel or run the smart contracts. So on the whole, if we were to look at the technology and the API, we can say this is a really good project with good use technology and good token integration use. This is the team behind the project. Now, one thing I don't really like about your website is that on the team profiles page, which is shown here, there is no resume or links to any of the resumes for their team member. Almost every other blockchain project website will give a little spill or at least a link to the LinkedIn profile for each staff. But this profile page only has the faces and the names. You can still find their resumes by searching them up individually, but it's pretty troublesome to do so. The two co-founders, Michael Kane and Matthew Kane, are actually twin brothers. They previously founded a company called Hedgeable in 2009, which is another fintech company. And Hedgeable has since won Finovate Best Show Award in 2015 and 17, as well as won the UK Great Tech Awards tech, um, Top Fintech in 2015. So it's an award-winning company. So it's good to know that the co-founders have had previous success and experience in fintech, um, in starting up a fintech company. Hedgeable, their previous project, has also attracted venture capital funding. So I'm hoping that Hydrogen will at some point also attract similar um, venture capital funding. For now, the website does not list any advisors, partners, or investors, which is a bit of a downer for me personally. Because as I mentioned before, 25% of all blockchain projects are focused at the moment on the financial industry. So if we have 2,000 blockchain projects roughly at the moment, there's about 500 um, blockchain projects focused on the financial industry. With very big dominant projects like Ripple and Stella in the space, it's going to take more than just having a good technology for a project to stand out from the rest. Good advisors and investors give more than just advice and money to the project. Good advisors and investors are important because they are successful, prominent individuals in the industry who also have a personal stake to see this project succeed. And many times we've seen projects get um, 
inroads to bigger partnerships because of the personal recommendation of their advisors or investors. So I think that you know having advisors and investors is an important aspect for any project and it would be good of Hydro to consider getting advisors or partners. Of course, the upcoming partnership with TD Banks itself is huge news and that is one outstanding partnership that I do expect to have a very big impact on this project as well as its influence or awareness in the crypto market. Another thing that the Hydro project or the website doesn't have is a clear roadmap for the whole project. Um, this is the only roadmap I found and this is the roadmap for their technology. As a roadmap for the technology, the raindrop snowflake ice tight and mist this is pretty clear and easy to read but a roadmap for the project needs to be more than this it needs to include the marketing milestones when they're going to plan to get the different apis out etc so i think whilst we can appreciate that the technology of this project is expected to be completed by the end of 2019 so there's a bit of a expectation there I think that on the whole, the website is lacking a proper roadmap to help to provide accountability and expectation to the community. One other consideration I have for this project is the scalability. Now, as we mentioned before, Hydrogen is really a second layer security solution to financial transactions. Now, in terms of scalability, Hydrogen doesn't really need to have a super high throughput like Ripple or Stellar will need to but it still needs to have a decent throughput if it's going to be used by multiple big financial institutions. Um, the way I look at it is like the role of a cashier as well and the bookkeeper. Now Ripple and Stella and the other financial projects that are focusing on changing the actual financial transaction, they are like the cashiers who need to have very high speed, very high throughput. The bookkeeper, on the other hand, is the person who processes the records of the transactions after it's done. The bookkeeper needs to be more secure and safe rather than fast. However, the bookkeeper also does need to be fairly fast in order to keep up with the volume of work. Now, Hydrogen is built on the Ethereum blockchain. And personally, I think that Ethereum is currently a terrible blockchain for dApps to be built on. The entire scalability capability of this project is dependent or limited by how scalable Ethereum is. And in their white paper, they explain that um, they're not so worried about this project because Vitalik and Joseph Poon have proposed the Plasma scaling solution for Ethereum. And there are also other solutions like Radon Network, etc. But the thing is this. Ethereum has been looking at... Um, scaling solutions like sharding plasma or radon for years and nothing has been practically achieved yet ethereum is still very very slow look at what happened just a few weeks ago when one exchange fcoin flooded the entire network and the entire ethereum network came to a crawl very very slow and gas was erupted Price of doing a transaction became ridiculously high up to $3 a transaction and timing for the transactions went to as slow as 3 hours for a transaction to go through. Ethereum has not gotten better compared to the CryptoKitties incident 8 months ago. It is still very, very slow. Now, I do think that there are a lot of practical solutions for uh, scaling on Ethereum coming up. And a lot of the ones that I'm more hopeful about are the second layer solutions like Loom, OMG, etc. But these second layer solutions will benefit new projects that are being built now because they can be built on the second layer solution. But they won't benefit the projects that are already built on the Ethereum network and using the Ethereum uh, processing power. Now, just because a new project like uh, OMG uh, or Pla uh, Loom is able to implement Plasma, it doesn't mean that Ethereum as an older project can also easily use Plasma. The difference is that Ethereum already has a thousand dApps built and running on it. And to implement any scaling solution, you have to implement it across the network at the same time. So trying to implement a scaling solution onto Ethereum is like trying to upgrade a train engine while the train is running at full speed. It is incredibly hard. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm saying that it is very hard. And where Ethereum may scale let's say in a year or two from now sometime later okay as a project hydrogen is already taking off now they already have a major partnership they need to function and scale now which i think ethereum doesn't provide so when 
projects, any project basically says in their white paper that, you know, Vitalik or Ethereum has proposed Plasma or Radon as a scaling solution. I don't buy it. Okay, that's not enough to put my mind at ease. I'll believe that Ethereum can scale when I actually see Ethereum doing cheap and fast transactions. Until then, any project that is restricted by Ethereum, in my opinion, is not out of the woods in terms of the scaling solution. The other thing that they mentioned here is that the raindrop will put very minimal strain on the Ethereum framework at this time. At this time, and that's fair enough, but the key phrase is at, at this time. With a mega partnership coming on board and the other features expected to roll out by the end of 2019, at some point, this project will be a significant volume on the Ethereum network. Furthermore, it doesn't really matter if Raindrop doesn't put much strain on the Ethereum network now. What matters is that Raindrop depends on the Ethereum network to function, which means this, right? Even though Raindrop may put very little strain on the Ethereum network, all you need is one Joker project like Fcoin to flood and clog up the entire system for everyone using the system, whether it's Raindrop, whether it's Hydro, whether it's you and me doing a simple Ethereum transaction to suffer. So even though they don't put much strain on the Ethereum framework, because the Ethereum framework is struggling from other projects, their transaction speeds will also struggle. So my concern is not with the project and its own technology. I think that the hydro technology is great. My concern is with Ethereum and how bad the network is at the moment and the fact that hydro is working on the network. They are a working product. They need to function well now, not in one or two years when Ethereum can scale. So personally, I think that they will be better off moving to an Ethereum compatible platform. And there's quite a number of them out by this point, like uh, P-Chain, etc. But that's just my own very unprofessional and layman way of looking at things. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Finally, rounding up with a look at the token price. Now, Hydro is a fairly new coin that was launched only at the start of April. Okay. Uh, but it's sitting at just under half of its all-time high, which is a pretty good portion at the moment compared to the other coins on the market. Now, if you ignore that pump and dump that happened in May, in general, the token price has been rising despite a recent bear market. Now, most other coins on the market only saw a recovery much more recently when the market turned green, but this coin recovered much earlier than the other projects. I think what this means to me is that people are paying attention to the TD Bank news and other positive news for this project and the people who are aware of this project, the investors, are believing in it and buying more. They are loading up on this project. They're expecting it to take off at some point soon. The overall market cap of this project is still very, very small. It's only 42.8 million and is ranked 282 on coin market cap. I think this is very undervalued and underrecognized for this project. Remember how I mentioned when Stella announced their partnership with IBM, the project basically shot up to the top 10. So you know, I don't know whether this project will hit the top 10, but even if it came into the top 100, top 50, top 20, even if it hit a $1 billion um, dollar market cap, which is very believable, that would easily be over a 20x gain. The reason I think that this project is still so undervalued and underrecognized is a number of reasons. Firstly, as I mentioned before, it's a very big market, uh, the financial blockchain uh, market that has about 500 other projects in the space at the moment. With that number of projects, it's very easy for a blockchain project to get lost. Secondly, they don't have any notable advisors or investors or partners up to this point to help them to achieve the market penetration that they need. But that is about to change if TD Bank partnership uh, does happen. And the last reason I think they've been so underrecognized is because they've really been on only very small exchanges. If you look at the list of exchanges that they are on, they are not on any major or even medium-sized centralized exchanges. Now, as blockchain supporters, as much as prefer decentralized exchanges, the truth is centralized exchanges are still the ones with the most trading volumes at the moment. So there is really very little volume uh, trading volume for this project. If you look at Ether Delta, for example, Hydro token in the last 24 hours only had a trading volume of $320 on Ether Delta. Not 320,000, 320 USD dollars. Okay, that is very, very small. So it, it makes it very hard to trade on some of these smaller exchanges. 
Now, I know that you know on the bigger exchanges like Bitmart, they have $6 million in terms of trading volume. I'm picking a small exchange like Ether Delta to highlight how small the overall trading volume of this token really is. If this token was to hit a medium-sized exchange, okay, like KuCoin, for example, the trading volume and price would probably rise very significantly. Definitely, if they hit a big uh, exchange like Binance, the, the price would definitely go up a lot simply because of the additional liquidity. So all of this tells me or speaks to me that this is a very undervalued coin with a lot of room to grow. All they need in this market is a catalyst to catapult it into mainstream attention. And I believe that the upcoming TD Bank announcement could be that catalyst. And when investors notice this project and they take a closer look at the fundamentals of this project, I think that a lot of investors will be very attracted because they will find that this is actually a rather solid project with very good fundamentals. So personally, I think that Hydrogen is a project worth paying attention to, definitely worth knowing about in the crypto space moving forward. So none of this is financial advice. This is all my personal thoughts on this project. So please always do your own homework and make your own decisions. Do drop a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts on Hydrogen is and whether you think their scalability on Ethereum is an issue, whether you disagree or di uh, agree with my thoughts. I'm not always right, so I would love to hear your thoughts on this matter. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you liked it and learned something from it, do hit that like and subscribe. We do have some other great project reviews coming up over the next couple of weeks, so make sure you follow us for that. It's Friday, guys. I hope that you guys have a great Friday and a great start to the weekend. Enjoy yourselves wherever you are, and I'll catch up with you again very soon.